Coming up next on The Jeff Curley Show, you're going to meet the founder of Women Fighting for America. Her incredible mission and ministry is just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I am a man of faith. I'm a believer. And when God talks to you, you have to listen. Uh, God spoke to Noah and he built an ark now, didn't he? God also spoke to Christy Hutcherson, my next guest, and it completely changed her life. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for having me. I'm All so right, excited. So you're with uh, Women Fighting for America. What is Women Fighting for America? Women Fighting for America was birthed out of a conversation. Quite frankly, I was having a Bible study in my backyard on Good Friday over three and a half years ago. And God called me to what I'm doing today. Uh, we are about educating and activating, about exposing corruption where we see it, bringing uh, lightness into the darkness, and quite frankly, just uh, looking at national and domestic security implications, as well as humanitarian efforts across not just the United States, but um, in the world. I'm so impressed with you, and, and we're going to go on your website and just scroll down because, girl, you got a lot going on. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Uh, everything from human trafficking to border security. Uh, how do you uh, decide what you're going to fight for? I pray first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I always ask God where he wants my time, talents, and treasure at this moment, and he's never steered me wrong and, it's, and led me on this incredible, incredible journey that I have. I am living proof of when you truly give it all and you say yes and you're all in to, for the kingdom that you can change your little piece of the world. Okay, before we set up this uh, clip that you're about to see, talk about why you keep going back to the border. Mm. So my border journey started a year and a half into Women Fighting for America. And a good friend of mine had called me up and said, I have friends who live in Yuma, Arizona, and they're literally afraid to leave their homes. And so I was, I was really intrigued by that. This was two weeks into the Biden administration. And this isn't political, by the way. This is about policies, agendas. This is about constitutional values and uh, the, the family units, quite frankly. And so I, you know, God said, Christy, I want you to take a, an elite small team and fly into Tijuana, Mexico and start driving the full 2,000 plus miles of the border. And that's exactly what I did. So I have probably been the only person who's done just that, both northern and southern border. Uh, and when we started looking at, from a national and domestic security perspective, we also started seeing the humanitarian part of this, the human trafficking, the child trafficking, drug trafficking, infant trafficking, organ trafficking, weapons trafficking. And we have a serious problem on our hands. Yes. Okay. I want to roll this video and I want you to kind of narrate it. What, what are we looking at? So this is the Rio Grande River down in the Eagle Pass sector area. And... Me and my team, we were actually originally on the Rio Grande on a uh, airboat. And so we are looking at what the activities were and how they were utilizing boats and different things to bring over these body loads. And the cartel, literally, this was the Sinaloa cartel. Um, and there's actually video of that too on this side if you watch the full video. Uh, they were calling our team over and they were actually with a mirror trying to get our attention. So we went over there and they asked us to call Border Patrol because they were getting to bring over a bunch of body loads. So that's exactly what we did. So while we were doing that, uh, we had another team looking down the river to see their operations, the cartel's operations. This is a di diversionary tactic that they do. They have all of the Border Patrol leave their, their stations. They descend in this one area while they move their narcotics, their weapons, or whatever uh, high value targets or that they want to bring over into the United States undetected. Wow, that is fascinating. Let's talk about the national media because, you know, depending on which channel you watch, uh, you're only getting so much information about yeah. the border. Uh, what's the media getting wrong about the border? Um, that this isn't just about immigration, first and foremost. Um, 
This is a national security threat to the, literally to the very existence of the United States of America. This isn't about people coming for a better way of life. This isn't about the, you know, they like to pull on our heartstrings with the women and the children. In reality, over 81% of everybody who's come over the border are young single adult males of fighting age. There's fentanyl, drugs, weapons, all of these terrorists flooding our borders. This is actually a national security issue at this point. Uh, the humanitarian part and the, and the child trafficking is a sep separate issue, but we need to close our borders just based on national security. Wow, and she is a frequent guest on the national media. Let's go ahead and roll this clip. One of the things that we just discovered, which is, uh, should make every American right now feel very insecure in this country, the largest tunnel ever found and the most sophisticated tunnel ever found was just now found. Nobody's reporting on this. We are breaking it uh, this week live. FBI, Homeland Security, and scientists from our federal agencies descended on this tunnel. It was supposedly accidentally found. It runs through a major area that is highly trafficked by Border Patrol. It runs through Mexico into the United States goes through a residential community, takes a left-hand turn, and then ends at the, a house, at the, the last house on the corner in this residential community. This tunnel has fiber optics, electricity, it has a rail system in it, it has fortified walls, ceilings. Uh, it, it is a very huge concern. And what I'd like to do is connect the dots on a couple things. Uh, when I see stuff like this from, uh, from a strategy perspective, militarily, I look at why, why would this be going on? And this tunnel is 25 feet under the ground. Looking at it, my uh, security team that travels with me and people with very special skills that they also understand how um, mining works. And there is no way possible, in our opinion, looking at this, that our government, somebody did not know that this tunnel existed. So my question is, what are the scientists doing there? What is the FBI doing there? What are they trying to cover up? Um, mm. We know that Iran and Russia and the cartels are working hand in hand together. This is a fact. Um, Iran, a couple months well, ago. And China too, right? Pardon? And, and China too. Don't we know that China too? as well. Well, China, absolutely. So China controls right now Central South America and into Mexico. They control the trade routes. Uh, they're also getting ready to control huge portions of the Panama, Panama Canal on both sides. Russia, um, about nine months ago, re-upped uh, uh, with the Nicaraguan president to bring in more military presence under the disguise of training. Mm -hmm. There was a plane that landed. It took off from Iran, from Tehran. It landed in Cuba, then it went to Mexico, picked up two passengers. Then it ended up in Venezuela, not just July, by the way. This is just recently. On that plane were, were senior officials in Iran uh, CUD forces, and if you don't know who CUD forces are, CUD forces are basically the equivalent to our Green Beret. And the individual yes. who was flying that plane was one of the head members of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. We've yeah. gotten intel that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in Iran is working with the cartel. They have some training camps set up over in Central America and Mexico, and they are building a proxy army. My question yeah. is, there's numerous tunnels that were just found. We found another one near Naco, Arizona. And what are they bringing over into our country? So when people watch clips like that, I, it can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. People can say, man, I, the problems are too big. The problems facing this nation are too big. What do you want people to know? You're the answer. There, there's nothing too big. There's always hope, right? As long as we have um, faith in the Lord, first and foremost, um, and then you activate. Um, our founding fathers gave us the roadmap that we need. We just need to get out the Constitution, dust it off the shelf, and uh, regurgitate it into our minds and our souls, and then out. Um, you need to be part of the, the solution to save America. And we're going to be trying to do that. I, I know I'm partnering with some other incredible patriot women across this nation. We want to come to your city, and we want to give you the tools that you need to peacefully secure our country and our nation. And how can people become part of your movement? Yeah, we'd love to. Go to our website, Women Fighting for America, WFFA. Dot w -I -N. And there's no mistake that I did W-I-N dot W-I-N because we're actually going to win. We know the back of the book, right? We win, but we do need to have you join forces to help that happen. 
you have been an amazing guest. We're going to have to have you back again soon. We're going to end with the website, which is, again, WFFA.win, the great Christy Hutcherson. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.